Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This is Easter worship for First Baptist Church of Pendleton, and we are celebrating with joy the resurrection of Jesus. We are celebrating differently this year because of the coronavirus, but we know that just as the tomb could not contain Jesus, nothing can contain our joy and our celebration. And so even in this difficult time, we celebrate with joy. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank you for joining us for worship on this Easter day. If you have not already, you can find a PDF worship guide on our website, fbcpendleton.org. It was also included in the email that included this link to this video as well. If you would like to light a candle as you prepare to worship, as we worship Jesus, the light of the world, and as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ.
Please join me in our gospel reading from Mark chapter 16. If you're following along at home, it is verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they ask each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's time for our Easter children's story and today instead of being in the sanctuary I am here at home at my house with my two children and they're going to help me with our story so boys what did we bring outside with us today our bikes your bikes, our bikes. that's right my brother's one is um, over here mine is like right next to me that's right in the background. let me ask mine you a question right me. yes let me ask you something about bikes are bikes scary to ride or fun to ride well I was like four years old I didn't want to ride my bike uh-huh because it was always like run a wheel yeah it, can it, be... was, it was always a wheel yeah it can be kind of scary at first can it or if you're on a big hill, but once you start riding, it's really fun, right? Yeah. Like when I first went down the hill, um, pretty distracted by a bug. Oh, really? That's <laughs> okay. a lot of bugs. Yeah. Well, let me show you it's this great. story from the Easter story. When the women went to the tomb on Easter Day, do you know what they thought, Caleb? At first, they were scared because Jesus' body wasn't there and they didn't know what to think. But then, do you know what happened? What? They found out the good news. Jesus was alive, and that's why he wasn't there. So something that seemed really scary at first turned out to be good news. And I thought about that when I was thinking about riding bikes, that riding bikes can be scary but also fun. Sometimes something that's really good, exciting news like my can first also be was, a little like, scary. Like my first teaser, I was kind of scared of what was in the eggs. Oh, really? And when I first opened it, um, I found out it was something I liked. Yeah. Sometimes. And then so I thought it was going to be flat out and out <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, let's say a prayer to thank God for the good news that Jesus is alive. At first, it seemed scary to the women, but it turned out to be really good news. Okay, let's say a prayer together. Dear God, thank you for the good news that Jesus is alive. And help us to remember that even when things seem scary, you are always with us. And you are a God of good news. Amen.
What a strange Easter day this is. I never imagined proclaiming the Easter Sunday sermon from behind a closed door in my own home. Easter is the highlight of the Christian calendar, the day we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, the reason for the hope that we have, the foundation of our faith. We are resurrection people because of Easter, because of this day, this glorious day of celebration. Yet today, on this Easter, our celebration is somewhat muted. We cannot do the things we usually associate with Easter, like come to church with hats and flowers and our white shoes dressed up for the biggest Sunday of the year. Instead, we are all huddled in our homes, trying to hold on to hope in a time that is frightening and uncertain. This time is, in many ways, much like that Sunday morning all those years ago when the women went to the tomb. Jesus' followers were afraid. They were anxious for themselves and for their loved ones. They had lost their dear friend and teacher, and they were afraid they might lose others. They could not begin to understand this world in which they are now finding themselves, a world they had never expected or imagined, a world without Jesus. Early Sunday morning, some of the women went to the tomb, while most of the disciples remained in their homes. At the tomb, the women expected to find Jesus' broken body, but it was not there. They did not see Jesus anywhere. Instead, they see another young man, one who gives them a message to proclaim, a message that seems too good to be true. Jesus is risen. Even though they have not seen the risen Jesus, they are told to tell others this good news. The man in a white robe sitting in an empty tomb tells the women, go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is verse 7 of Mark chapter 16. And in this verse, we find a hopeful Easter message for this strange Easter day. And I have even made us some low-tech cue cards to remind us of this message. It begins with, go and tell. After so many times in the Gospel of Mark that followers of Jesus were told not to tell what Jesus had done, not to tell about the miracle they had experienced, not to tell anyone of Jesus' power, here finally they are told, go and tell. We should probably not be that surprised that people usually seem to do the opposite of what they were told. Those who were told not to tell about Jesus' healing usually went and told everyone. And here, the women are told to go and tell. And yet Mark tells us in verse 8, they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. They are given good news, and they are finally given the go-ahead to share this good news about Jesus yet they are too afraid. But there's good news for that too. The messenger at the tomb tells the women to go and tell his disciples and Peter. And Peter are perhaps two of the most hopeful words in the gospel story. The word and here is not to imply that Peter is not included among the disciples, but it is to emphasize Peter, even Peter. Tell the disciples, including Peter. Peter, who denied Jesus. Peter, who had promised to never forsake Jesus, and yet, in Jesus' hour of greatest need, denied any connection to Jesus. This good news that Jesus is alive, this promise that Jesus will meet them in Galilee, is even for Peter and Peter. The resurrection is for us, even when we fall short. The resurrection is for us, even though we do not deserve it. The resurrection is for all who have failed to do what Jesus called them to do. And so the women's failure to share this good news as they are instructed does not exclude them from it. Our own failures to follow Jesus do not exclude us from the good news. This good news is even for those disciples who have gone astray. Go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. Galilee is where Jesus did most of his ministry of teaching and healing and casting out evil spirits. 
Galilee is where Jesus called his disciples, where he prayed alone, and where he fed the crowds. Galilee is where Jesus challenged the boundaries of clean and unclean, Jew and Gentile, male and female. Galilee is where Jesus announced the coming kingdom of God. And so here the messenger says to the women, go to Galilee. He is going ahead of you there. And there you will see him. Jesus is not to be found in the empty tomb, but among the people of the world who need him. Jesus is found in the work he did and in those who carry on that work, the work of feeding the hungry, offering a cup of water, welcoming children, protecting the vulnerable, and offering grace and hope to all, even unto the least of these. That is where Jesus will be seen. There you will see him. The women at the tomb are told to go back to Galilee, and they are given these instructions without any real proof. The tomb is empty, but they have not actually seen the risen Christ. They are sent to proclaim this good news based on faith. They are called to keep believing in the power of Jesus just three days after they saw that power nailed to a cross. And they are called to keep believing based on the word of a stranger in a white robe. They are called to faith and something they could not see. Is it any wonder that they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid? On this Easter day, we gather through technology. I am speaking into my computer to a congregation I cannot see about a Christ we cannot see, but with the message that we trust points to God's work in this world. Jesus is alive. We cannot see Jesus, and today we cannot even see one another. And yet our faith calls us to proclaim this good news, this too good to be true beyond our wildest dreams. Jesus is alive, good news, even when we cannot see it. We are promised that we will see Jesus. We will see the good work of Jesus and we will participate in the work of Jesus. We will join together with the body of Christ, the church, once again. We will see one another again. We will celebrate the resurrection together. Today's Easter celebration does not look or feel quite like the glorious celebrations we remember from other years. But it is still good news. Good news for all of us. Good news when we cannot see it. Good news of what is yet to come and of, we, of what we have yet to experience. Go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. We will see him. That is a promise. We will see one another. We will celebrate together because Jesus is alive. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the opportunity together in this strange way, in these strange times. And God, we thank you that you are a God who knows strange times. God, you have led your people through many frightening and challenging times in the past, and we know you are with us even now. And even though we are unable to be together at church on this Easter day, we know, God, that your good news, the good news of Jesus's resurrection, is still good news. And perhaps this year, we need that good news more than ever. We pray, God, that that good news would reach each of us wherever we are, however we are feeling this day, whatever we are experiencing. We pray, God, that your good news would shine into our hearts, into the darkest places, into the deepest struggles, and that you would draw us out gently and beautifully into the light. May we live in the light of the glory of the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus whom we follow and Jesus in whose name we pray. Amen.
for worshiping with us on this Easter day, this strange yet still joyous and celebratory Easter day. We typically end our Easter worship service by gathering on the front lawn to flower the cross. Thank you to many of you who sent in pictures this week to allow us to have a virtual flowering of the cross. We will be able to do that at the end of our worship video this morning. We will sing one more hymn together, and after the hymn, you will see the flowering of the cross. I hope you enjoy this wonderful Easter day as we celebrate Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. 